Hey, my name is Chad Findlay. I'm uh, one of the co-project directors on Tony Hawk's Proving Ground at Neversoft Entertainment. The big picture for Tony Hawk's Proving Ground was to uh, allow the player to choose how he makes his way to the top as a pro skater. Um, and to do that, we broke up um, skaters, pro skaters, into sort of three different styles or classes of skating. Um, the hardcore skaters, the guys who sort of skate for themselves. Um, they do like to go bigger than everybody else, like to do things nobody else has done. Um, then you got your career skaters. These are the guys that um, really like to nail the tricks. They like to land them the first time, but then they also like to be able to get the fame and the fortune uh, from that. You know, they're on the magazine covers, they're doing the competitions, they're doing the demos. And the last is the uh, what we call the riggers, and these are the innovators of the skaters. The guys who, when they see an empty parking lot, they try to figure out how they can change it so it skates well. When they see a place they want that would skate well, but is not allowed to, they figure out how can I break into that place. Um, so we broke up the game into these three distinct styles, but then we allow you then to choose what percentage of any of these you want to do. Just sort of like in you know a game that has fighters and magic uh, magic users and thieves. You don't have to be just a fighter or a magic user or a thief. You can be any percentage of a rigger or any percent, uh, percentage of a hardcore skater or any percentage of a, a career skater that you want. So if you want to be total career, you can do all the career stories, uh, learn nail the grab, nail the trick, nail the manual, all that. You can. Or you can just sort of even yourself out if you want to be more of like an across-the-board guy and you can do just as much that way as well. The players can uh, select which path they take based on um, who they spend their time with. At the start of the game, we introduce the players to the three different styles. You know, you do a little bit of career uh, skating, you do a little bit of hardcore uh, skating, and a little bit of rigor skating. You get, kind of get a feel for what it's like, and then we open up the game. And then based on who you spend your time with, which pros, which other characters in the game you do, which stories you go down based on that, um, uh, then you start to learn more and more about what it's like to be that style of skater. And if you stick with those character stories, um, then you'll learn, you'll keep going down their paths, you become more hardcore, or you become more rigor, or you become more career, you'll get more attributes, you'll upgrade those things more, and you become more and more like that skater that you choose to be. The controls for the base game are fairly um, understandable, and then we wanted to allow the player then to choose how they play, because they don't have to do any one of the things. You know, if they want to learn the, the systems of nail the trick and nail the manual, nail the gram, they can. If they don't want to, they don't have to. They can also, you know, go down the the um, hardcore routes or go down the rigor routes and play however they want to. Um, so at the end of the day, what we try to do is actually level out the way you play so you can pick and choose what you want to do rather than forcing you to do all of it. When um, Project 8 added Nail the Trick, uh, that was one of the coolest things that I thought got added to the series. Um, I'm a bit of a physics geek, so I really like seeing how interactions happen between body and, and board and all that. And um, I saw a lot of potential in what we could do. And when we added the um, career style of skating, it seemed to seem perfect to merge the two of, we've got nailed the trick, what other things can we add to really allow total control of your board? So we took the same approach that we did with nail the trick, and having total control of your appendages and your feet in that case, be able to play with the board, do whatever you want with it. And we did the same thing for nail the grab. You can grab the board in any of the locations. Once you grab, you can tweak it out based on you know how you use the sticks. You know your your right stick is your right hand, your left stick is your left hand. Um, if you do a quick turn of it, you'll finger flip the board. You can catch it right back the same way you would in nail the trick. And the same thing with nail the manual. Total control of both both feet, uh, and depending on where the board is when you just uh, when you start to use your feet, you'll land either you know nose manual, manual, Casper or anti Casper, and just allows you to have control and still be creative um, with your board. No one skater truly like is like you know purely career, purely hardcore, or purely rigor. We know that, and um, we didn't try to push anyone into being one of those things. But we did notice certain things that um, a lot of the skaters have um, that do make them come you know rise above and, and stick out more than others. You know, Mike V does like to go harder. You know, he has a really hard kick to him. Um, Day One does. You know, if you've seen Cheese and Crackers, you know, he creates these awesome setups that he uses. You know, just totally. Uh, um, out of his mind, like, oh, he sees a spot and then you know, tweaks it to be skatable. Um, all these guys have certain aspects to them that really lend themselves to these three different styles of skater. So we're not really trying to classify the pros into, specifically, they are the, the paragon of these. It's just that the, their strengths tend to lend towards these three different styles of them, and it seems to suit our stories very well. Um, I think it's near 400 different items you can use to customize your skater, as well as as you play through the game, you know, as you go down the career road, you'll actually get some bling necklaces or a graduation ring or a, 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 a money sign b uh, belt buckle. If you go down the hardcore path, you know, you'll get a scar on your face or some new tattoos. You'll actually get branded at one point on your neck. Um, 
Uh, or if you go down the, the rigger, you know, you get some uh, more tools and, and equipment to use, gloves and work pants. Um, and all these things will help show off sort of who you are as your skater. And all these things are still optional, so if you want to, you know, make your guy the crazy green-skinned, um, kooky character you can, or you can go totally realistic. I want it to look like me and, re um, and resemble the career I've taken, the path I've taken for uh, going to the top. At any time, you can jump uh, to any, any paths that you want to. Um, and that was sort of the point again, like we wanted you to be able to have the choices. So if you start down a hardcore path, you know, let's say you're going, um, doing huge epic gaps with Mike V, and you, um, and you see a, a career scale, you see Bob Burnquist hanging over there, you can actually go and talk to him, and he can start teaching you about Nail the Grab. And if you want to keep going down that, you can learn more and more about Nail the Grab, and your character will actually start leveling out as far as, like, you know, what type of skater he becomes. You know, he was hardcore, now he starts adding a little bit career, you know, and then he can continue going down more career, or he can go back and doing hardcore and be total hardcore again. Um, and then once he gets uh, to a certain point, the appropriate sponsors will uh, come and approach him, you know, so if he has gone totally hardcore, the hardcore sponsors will go to him, whereas if he's gone more career, you know, the career, you know, the quicksilvers and all those will come and, and, and talk to him. Um, it's funny because uh, skate culture is freaking huge. There is so much stuff out there. Actually, um, my favorite one up until this one to work on was Thug because I actually got to sit down and interview all the skaters and learn about their lives, you know, and I got to ask these guys how they got to where they got. Um, and what they do and what they do to keep going in the, in, in, um, the industry. And there are just so many stories and so many ways that people um, live the life of a skater is that, like, it, it's not that much, tr it's not that difficult to really come up with something that you really get into. Um, that and then being able to start six months early on this one, you know, because I, I just finished up Gun and I jumped on this one six months before Project 8 started. Um, we were really able to focus our design and come up with something that um, you know, we did a lot of research and found out what the, the people that l play the games wanted to see. We did a lot of pulling the guys in the company and really came up with a picture that we all really got excited about and got behind and, and uh, really stoked that we were able to deliver on it.